Welcome back to cellular respiration. This portion of cellular respiration, we are going to talk about the Krebs cycle, all right? Remember from the previous video on glycolysis, in glycolysis, it, we generated the product we needed to start the Krebs cycle. That product is our acetyl-CoA, all right? So if you remember correctly, we went from our sugar through various enzymatic steps to generate our pyruvic acid, all right? The pyruvic acid was then converted into our acetyl-CoA, all right? Remember our pyruvic acid was our three carbon sugar, or our three carbon molecule. Our sugar was our six carbon molecule, all right? With that um, conversion of pyruvic acid into acetyl-CoA, this is going to be where we're going to generate some of our carbon dioxide, all right? We are also going to generate some of the NADH, or those electrons that we need to fuel the electron transport chain, all right? And we're going to be left with a two-carbon molecule with the coenzyme A attached to it, all right? So that acetyl-CoA is going to be what we need to start our Krebs cycle, all right? And as far as the Krebs cycle goes, I am going to have a couple of the terms that I want you to be familiar with. One of those terms is the oxyl acetate, all right? The oxyl acetate, you can think of that as kind of hanging out in the Krebs cycle, waiting for acetyl-CoA, because when acetyl-CoA enters our Krebs cycle, that those two carbons are attached to the oxyl acetate to generate our citric acid, okay? So our citric acid is what we're going to start with in the Krebs cycle. In the process of removing those two carbons, we are going to um, generate some more of our carbon dioxide, and we're also going to generate a lot more electrons for the electron transport chain. Because really the main goal of the Krebs cycle is to generate electrons for the electron transport chain. All right. So in terms of this, via various enzymatic steps, we're going to take citric acid, we're going to lop off one of those carbons. All right. And because we lop off one of those carbons, we've generated some of our carbon dioxide. Okay. But in lopping off that carbon, we've also got some electrons floating around that need to be sopped up. And those electrons are going to be sopped up by the NAD to generate our NADH. All right. So citric acid is going to go to alpha ketoglutarate. All right. Let me put a star next to this because really the terms I want you to know, the oxyl acetate, the citric acid, and then I want you to concentrate on the products that are produced as part of the Krebs cycle, all right? The alpha-ketoglutarate then is converted by a series of enzymatic steps again to succinate. We're going to lop off that other carbon. So this is where we're going to generate some more carbon dioxide associated with cellular respiration, all right? We are also going to generate some more electrons for the electron transport chain in, the terms, of, in terms of NAD being converted to NADH. All right. The other thing we're going to have happen here is out of the Krebs cycle, we again get a little bit of ATP that's made. All right. And in terms of the ATP, what you'll see in your book, it has it labeled as GTP there, okay? What happens in the Krebs cycle is that first we're going to get GDP converted to GTP, 
the GTP the, then is going to be what generates our ATP. I'm not concerned with you understanding how the GTP converts things to ATP. What I am concerned about is that you know that we get some ATP that's generated out of the Krebs cycle, okay? But don't let the book um, throw you as far as that goes. That's why that's there, is because it's first created as um, GTP, the GTP creates the ATP. What I want you to know, we're generating some ATP going between alpha ketoglutarate and succinate, okay? So we've got a lot that happens there, all right? When we arrive at succinate, we're back to being a four carbon molecule, but there are still lots of electrons to strip off of these chemicals that um, are created in the Krebs cycle, okay? And in terms of that, when we go from succinate to fum um, fumarate, we are actually going to have something new that's gonna be introduced here, I haven't talked about yet, and that's FAD, okay? FAD then is going to be converted to FADH2, all right? And essentially what this is, is this is another electron carrier. Just like our NAD to NADH, okay? If you want to think of them as equivalent, that's fine, all right? The basic difference is you get slightly more ATP generated per NAD um, H than you do per FAD. But essentially what they're doing, these are both going to supply electrons to the electron transport chain. All right. So we've got the FAD that's converted to FADH. Our fum um, fumarate is going to be converted into malate with a little bit of water added. All right. And then we're going to complete our cycle, and that malate, which is again four carbons, still is going to have a few electrons to donate. So those electrons are going to be collected. Once we've collected those last electrons, we go back to being oxyacetate. All right. Therefore, we've completed our cycle, which is why this is called the citric acid or the Krebs cycle. All right. One of the things you need to keep in mind here, we took one turn of the citric acid cycle, all right? We had one acetyl-CoA that fed into our citric acid cycle to give us essentially our three NADH out, our two carbon dioxides, our FAD, and our ATP, all right? When we were talking about glycolysis with that sugar, all right, remember we split that sugar into two pyruvic acids, so we had two molecules. Those two pyruvic acids are going to generate two acetyl-CoA's, all right? So in terms of that, we get two turns. of our citric acid cycle. Oops, goodness, my spelling is just terrible today. You'll have to forgive me. <sighs> goodness, I'll get it. Hang with me. Cycle, it's not that hard a word. I spell oxyacetate, but I can't spell cycle. That's one of the downsides of having a PhD. All right, we get two turns of the citric acid cycle per glucose molecule, okay? So for every glucose that goes in, we get two turns, which means as far as total products associated with the Krebs cycle, all right? Total, because we get two turns, we get six total NADH generated, we're gonna get two ATP generated, we're gonna get um, two FADH generated, and then we're going to have four carbon dioxide, okay? Now in terms of that, we've got six total carbon dioxide that come out of the process. Remember our other two carbon dioxides are generated here when pyruvic acid is converted to acetyl-CoA. 
Some textbooks will put this conversion of pyruvic acid to acetyl-CoA as a precursor to the Krebs cycle. Some don't. As long as you're aware of where the carbon dioxide is generated, that's what I'm concerned with. I'm concerned with, you know, with how much is generated per glucose molecule, okay? So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, let me know. Next, we're gonna talk about the electron transport chain and really what we're gonna do with those NADH. Because in terms of the Krebs cycle, the goal of our Krebs cycle is not generating more ATP, although that's a nice side effect. We're generating electrons for our electron transport chain. And that electron transport chain is going to be the topic of the next video. All right, this time I mean it. Thank you for your concentration. And um, if you have any questions, let me know.